How to Beat the Lockdown Blues Part 2. And in Part 1, I just went over the deep root cause of why this is more challenging than ever, not just because of the external conditions and being on quote unquote physical lockdown, is the more locked down we are in our mind, the more we're feeling locked down because of the circumstances of having to stay home. And so in part one, all the meat of the sandwich is in part one, is understanding how the brain doesn't like to be taken out of the safety zone or the comfort zone. And then when we're asked to stop doing our lives as we are normally used to living our lives, that adds extra added strain and it exacerbates the underlying root cause problem. And so if there is a sense of lockdown in our mind, then to be physically locked down is going to be even worse or harder to handle. And a lot of um, my clients and people I speak to will say, no, you know, this isn't a fear thing and I disagree. It's definitely an unconscious fear that we don't even know and it shows up as irritability, angst, um, anxiety, and this feeling of I'm having trouble not being able to do my thing. I'm having trouble not being able to go to the gym and go to the coffee shop and do my work. I mean, I hear this over and over and over again and I just think, wow, okay, you know, that used to be me. If I couldn't have my freedom on the outside, I didn't have a sense of freedom within my own mind, in my head. And then realizing that that never worked over the long term that the exact counterintuitive opposite is true is the more freedom we have from within our minds, the more freedom we have regardless of what's happening outside of ourselves externally in the conditions, especially right now. I'm only speaking mainly in the United States. My country is to be in lockdown in the country of the free is the hardest thing collectively for all of us and I am a freedom seeker. I have to feel the sense of freedom to do what I want, when I want, how I want on my terms most of the time, if not all the time. So freedom to me is everything. It is my sense of myself and it's my sense of happiness and fulfillment and and prosperity and purpose. So for me, freedom is everything and at all costs. At all costs, freedom is number one for me. And so that means that I've taken a lot of risks to be where I am and to maintain and sustain my freedom. But the main point here is the freedom comes in the mind first. So the more we are free in our minds, whatever is happening around us is is ideally virtually irrelevant. And so then... You know, it shows up as excuses. Oh, I can't go to the coffee shop and work and I have to stay at home and I'm closer to my family and and my roommates and, you know, my parents and I can't do anything. Uh, That is not true. It's only because the unconscious fear of not being, being able to pursue your dreams, your goals, your intentions is the fear of failure is underneath all of it. And one client after another will say, no, that's not really it. I say, okay. And so we keep talking, we keep going, we keep digging deep and we circle right back to, oh my gosh, I'm afraid that I'm not going to reach my goals. I'm afraid that I'm not going to, you know, have a sense of fulfillment and meaning in my life. And it's really the fear of failure. Underneath it all, we can't even see it is a fear of failure and we'll have the symptoms, anxiety, uh, feeling trapped, feeling irritable, feeling, um, oh God, this sense of in lockdown, it's in lockdown in our minds, in our heads, is that then we feel if we're locked down, we can't be ourselves. We can't do what we want to do. We can't share with other people as we want to share. We can't meet with other people. We can't have relationships. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. We create these perceptions and negative perspectives of I'm trapped, I can't, I can't go here, I do better at the coffee shop than working at home, I need to 
be out and about and meeting people and talking to people and I need to be in nature and I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to do this. And if I can't, this is actually the perception. If I can't have all these things happening in my external conditions, then I can't do what I need to do to get where I want to be. And the answer is to be first, is to be okay with your circumstances within your own mind and your heart and then everything else becomes irrelevant that is the way to do this that is the solution that absolutely solves the problem now easier said than done yeah absolutely and that's why I did part one go back and listen to that over and over again is to understand that the fear mechanism in our and the human brain will create this quote unquote entrapment or lockdown within our minds. And so of course, no matter what's happening outside of ourselves, we then think, oh no, it's because I can't go out. It's because all the gyms and restaurants are closed. It's because I can't go see a movie. It's because I can't go see my friends, visit my family. I can't, I can't, I can't. So you have the perceptive, the perspective really of I can't unless I, and that's not true. And so it's triggering underneath it all the unconscious fear of not getting ahead in life, not accomplishing your goals, not accomplishing your intentions and reaching your highest, fullest potential to be the person that you consciously know you can be. You're feeling held back by these external obstacles when really it's just exposing the lockdown that has already existed most of your life within your own head and mind because of the basic brain function of detecting fear and keeping us safe. So this is every human being on the planet. It levels the playing field and it's so vitally important to understand this this aspect of if I'm locked down in my mind, I'm locked. If, no, I'm sorry. If I'm locked down in my external conditions and I have to stay home it's only highlighting the lockdown that has already existed in your mind since childhood and that's my story and I'm sticking to it and I can prove it over and over and over again with people's own lives but the best way to prove it is that was me I was forever locked down, locked out in my own mind of all my dreams, all my self-love, all my self-worth. I was locked out of my connection to myself, my sense of self, my unconditional love for myself, and oh my God, unconditional acceptance of myself, the good, the bad, the ugly, the all the things I didn't like about myself that I'm able to accept now. And because I've been able to reframe those things within myself. So in transforming this quote unquote mental lockdown was having this sense of freedom by understanding myself and why my brain worked against me and not for me uh, based on the fear mechanism. And, And that has to be in play for survival purposes to keep human beings alive Uh, breathing with a pulse but then it's the conscious mind that can override and and make sense of the fear to actually mitigate it and get rid of the fear so we can go on regardless of our circumstances in the most powerful self-loving self-accepting self-confident way and continue to achieve everything that we desire and are most passionate about is getting freed up and out of the lockdown in the mind and to see and reframe the perceptions of, oh my God, this is a blessing in disguise. What's happening collectively is because of the fear mechanism, but I have the, I have the ability and I have the conscious mind to override it, is understand what's really going on is I'm... If I think I have to stay at home, I'm not going to accomplish my goals, I am then going to fail at some level, whether now or down the line. That is the quick answer, and I know this all too well because that was my entire life. I am a recovering 
overachiever, recovering perfectionist through overachievement. So that means there's no way I could ever be locked down or locked and had to be forced to stay in my house. That would have killed me because I was the high school graduate who immediately left New Jersey and moved to California. Imagine if you if I had been forced to stay there. Oh my God, it would have been a nightmare. But I'm thinking that moving to another state and moving out of my home would free me up and it never did. It never did because all of the lockdown was because I was locked down in my mind and I couldn't make sense of anything. I couldn't make sense of myself. I couldn't make sense of life at all. And so by unlocking all the things that I did not understand, that I could not see, that I didn't know, that I didn't have any idea of, nor did I even think to look for it, it was only because of genius, brilliant teachers, mentors, mentors, <laughs> mentors, mentors, seminar leaders, uh, therapists, counselors, coaches, all these genius people collectively taught me something that resonated with me. And then I was able to take all that information and use it to understand myself, my uniqueness and how my mind works with my personality. And voila, here I am today. So in short, it was really having this most incredible, magnificent sense of myself, which I was searching for my whole life, thanks to all these brilliant geniuses that I had attracted or had been in my life that had showed up out out of nowhere. But in essence, I called them all in to teach me. And and it's just the friends that suggested I take a seminar and I do this and I do that. Um, And I have to take the credit a lot early on in childhood. I sought to understand myself. I sought professional help. I was able to say to my mother, I want therapy. And she put me in therapy and had the money to pay for it. So it was this constant seeking and searching to understand myself. And what really did it was understanding the basic brain function of how the human brain works, which levels the playing field. And I, little by little, one key after another, unlocked the next door and the next door and the next door to my subconscious mind and then my unconscious mind, and every time I unlocked something and saw something that I didn't know was there that was getting in my way, it created more freedom and more freedom and more freedom within my mind. So then I was able to do deal with my life and deal with people and deal with whatever circumstance was coming at me, what, would, what was going on. Uh, In the economy at the time, what was happening around me, an earthquake, riots, like all these things, a pandemic, it doesn't matter. It still came down to the same thing is the mental health, the mind health, the well-beingness, the ability to understand myself and how I was now being affected cause and effect and the perceptions and perspective I was creating in my mind, how I was viewing the situation, how I was viewing myself, then viewing the circumstances, viewing the external conditions, viewing what's happening with a pandemic and and the mass hysteria and this overall negative crisis. I was seeing that I was getting sucked into the negativity because I had already had so many hidden negativities uh, within my thought patterns and how I was perceiving any everything. And then I was able to transform this and turn it around and say, you know what, what was I thinking? Oh my God, I have, I, my, my perspective on life has been so brutally skewed. I've been thinking the worst about myself and everybody else in the world And I had no data or evidence or proof to back it up. I had complete opposite. I had so much abundance. I had so much prosperity. I had so many gifts and talents that I never saw. I couldn't even believe that they existed. And it didn't even matter if people complimented me or not. I still couldn't internalize. I didn't believe it. It wasn't registering. It was like, 
oh my God, it was like um, an iPhone trying to be an Android. Like, okay, the Android's talking to the iPhone. Okay, so you got to have this function, this function. And the iPhone's going, what? I don't understand. You're talking a foreign language. Nothing. Sorry. Got to go. Bye. And then the iPhone goes back to the other iPhones and the Android is like, well, I tried to help him. Uh, and it, it didn't register. That's how I was. Nothing was like registering in my mind. But then I had to train. I had to learn all these things. And, and what set me free was the whole um, understanding that my brain was working against me in fear as opposed to for me in freedom and, and fantasy. And, and so I was having, I had these negative, pessimistic views, number one of myself and of everyone and everything around me. And that created this low-grade depression. And then learning to reframe and see all the good and put my life in perspective. You know, one of the things is we, we think the worst. The brain's hardwired to think the worst, but it can always be way worse. That's what really helped me. As I was saying, God, my life sucks. I, I don't like my parents. They don't get me. I hate my mom. She's such a domineering, controlling crazy person and that was not true that was my those were my perceptions and I realized that you know nobody's perfect she did things the way that she did them for her reasons and I took all the good I was like oh my god I can see all the good I can see her point of view I can see where she's coming from because I was learning to see where I was coming from first I saw why I was thinking the worst about myself and yet all along None of the data supported all of the drama within myself and all of the worthlessness within myself. And I was able to then understand. And it took, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to retrain the mind, retrain the brain. The way we retrain really is to have more mindfulness or consciousness, to develop the newest part of the brain, the conscious mind. And the conscious mind is the one that's most logical and rational um, and has the ability to see and, and distinguish what is real versus what is imagined where the subconscious mind can't distinguish that automatically. It's the conscious mind that has to step in and say, hey, listen, wait a minute. You know, the fear is not really rational right now because you're fearing the worst and you have no evidence to prove that that's even possible. Like, oh God, I can't go skydiving, I'm going to die. Well, the chances, yes, you could, but really it, the chances of dying in skydiving are so slim or so rare that the data doesn't support such fear to skydive. And so, of course, everyone's entitled to their fear, but we want to take that template and put it on other areas of our life oh god the world's ending and oh no the pandemic and oh my god I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the uh, coronavirus and if we look at that particular person and go okay and we look at their history and they're they happen to be one of the healthiest people they rarely if ever get sick they go to the doctor and get tests and they all come out positive yet the person's fearing that they're gonna get the disease so the more we are in fear and think the worst, the more it compromises the immune system. And then our defenses are down. And yeah, then we're actually more susceptible. So um, as we're learning to reframe our thoughts and our perceptions, our points of view, our perspective on ourselves and on life and on the, the, in the big scheme of things, and we can see all the good and get the data to support the good. You know, for instance, I went and did all the statistics uh, for my high-level men's mastermind, and I was floored by what I saw because it's such a pandemic, but the numbers were so small in comparison to other diseases that it made no logical sense to me. Not to say, don't be concerned. Absolutely. But let's not overreact and over-dramatize the situation when the statistics are not supporting the mass hysteria. And then it helped me calm down and go, okay, all right. And on top of the fact, my father is living in China right now as we speak, and he cannot come back to the U.S. right now, but he 
my parents are divorced and he predominantly lives in China. And so I have the privilege and honor to get to speak to him and ask him what's happening there in your country where you reside. And he's telling me what's happening and what's not happening. And I can see that I'm going to trust my, my father over the news. He's actually there living it. He's telling me the statistics. And even when he did, I went and rechecked his statistics. And some of them he told me weren't right. So I went and got my own statistics. I do my own independent research. I don't take um, hearsay. I do it for myself to keep me calm and logical and rational. And my father is a brilliant man. He has a PhD. He has a master's degree. And, and so I respect him. However, just because he has all these degrees and he's done so many amazing things in education, I still need to do my own research because I trust myself. And I the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thanks to my dad, I got a really amazing brain. Thanks to his mother and his father and all the people on his side. So I'm like, huh, you know what? I'm pretty smart. I think I am. And I do a lot of reading and training and, and, and I did extremely well in school. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use my brain because I have one and I know how powerful, whether I'm smart or not smart, or I think I am, or I think I'm even stupid. What I do know without fail is the human brain is the most high powered supercomputer on the planet. And yeah, I happen to have one. So I'm like, Hey, all right. Even if I know nothing, I'm going to use this supercomputer already in my mind. Nothing, I don't believe anything on the planet can beat the human brain because the human brain is still connected to the human heart and the soul and the spirit. There's no way to beat that with a computer, you know, but that's just my opinion, whatever. Um, And I'm just going to go with myself. But I know if you're human with the human brain, you are already by default brilliant. You are already have the capacity to own your own genius, whatever that genius is. You're gifted, you're talented, you're skilled. If you have a human brain, then it's there for the taking. And that that I'll just go with. And I say, okay, well, if I have a human brain, I'm going to use it because it's supersonic amazing and more high power than any supercomputer on the planet to date. Then I'm going to go learn. I'm going to go train. I'm going to go memorize and read and listen to reliable sources and I'm going to do my own due diligence. I'm going to do my own research and back up what I've been told and then use that information for good. It keeps it logical and rational and it that happens because I'm able to reframe my perceptions and perspective and it, all of a sudden everything lines up and it's making sense. Okay, logically. Okay, now I can calm down. This calms down that fear. That it, it actually overrides this you know, this thought of drama and oh no, and what if it all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second. The chances of me if I'm working from home, I'm not out very much. The chances of me really catching the coronavirus are slim to none. On top of the fact that I'm extremely healthy and have been, especially because I do believe that the the unconscious mind, whatever happens in the unconscious mind, comes through the body. So the body, if there's any disease or dis-ease in the unconscious mind, the body is the vehicle in which it signals us. And that's Louise Hay's work. I love her, Louise Hay. And that's also Dr. Joe Dispenza, is, um, which I love, is the body's the unconscious. So if I know that if I deal with whatever fears that are unconscious to me, I bring them up to the surface and I'm conscious of them, the more I have the power to have a healthy, strong body, right? But it's the mind first. It's the unconscious, subconscious, and conscious mind first. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. That's what has worked for me. And I've done miraculous things to turn my body around from fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and celiac disease Um, After my sister died, after my suicide phase, my suicide attempt phase, I couldn't even dance. I couldn't even move because my body was shutting down and I was able to reverse all of that. 
And so I live it. This is through my own personal experience and it just keeps working over and over and over again is the more I unlock the blocks and the, the subconscious and unconscious uh, self-defeating, self-sabotaging thoughts and, and beliefs, the more it unlocks the freedom. So now, regardless of circumstances, I can feel free inside first and foremost. So any external lockdown isn't going to get to me that much, which it hasn't. It's almost like business as usual. Like nothing's really changed all that much, except I'm much more cautious. I make sure that you know when I go out, uh, do the distancing, and I wear gloves. Um, I don't feel I need to wear a mask, but if that's the case, I'm happy to. As a matter of fact, my I, a friend made me a beautiful mask to wear that's very fashionable, and I have it in my purse if I need it. But I'm thinking. You know, the healthier I can be, the less likely I am to catch any disease regardless and uh, spread a disease. So I'm, of course, courteous and respect and respectable, respecting to others. Uh, I'm doing all of that, taking all the smart precautions. But it, when I keep things in rationality and I'm logical and the, the data supports my perspective, my perspective and perceptions, then all of a sudden I calm down. There's very little fear, if any. And then the conscious mind can then start, there's this clarity that sets in. And, I, and all of a sudden I see so much abundance around me, so much gratitude. And I think back of, wow, all the things that I've done in my life, I was able to, that I've never been through anything like this before, It's surreal. You know, I'm driving down the street from the grocery store and I see people walking with masks on. I'm like, wow, this is so surreal in my lifetime and how I was raised here in the U.S. But I know, I know that other people in the world have it way worse. People down the street, you know, where I was doing my volunteer work, these women had it way worse than I could ever imagine. And that helps me to keep a proper perspective But the main thing is to not go down the dark road with the whole fear, oh no, what if, is more of, wait a minute, let me make sure I have all the accurate, most reliable information and let me draw my conclusions from that. Let me create my beliefs and my my thoughts, my perceptions uh, based on all the information collectively so that I can make powerful choices, powerful decisions and see, is the fear warranted? Do I really allow myself to get so overreactive in fear? Well, if it's legitimate, absolutely. For instance, you know, God forbid, knock wood, if anything happened to one of my horses, there's, I have to knock wood. If anything happened to my horses, well, I'm going to be hysterical. And then I have to even do the same thing. I have to actually tell myself with the conscious mind, okay, wait a minute before we get overreactive, let's get the facts first. What's happening? Did the horse break its leg? Is it tied up under the fence? Uh, Is it fighting? Is there blood? Is there no blood? Um, What vets are available right now? Which vets, you know, uh, who's my favorite uh, vet? Is my vet available? If not, whom else can I call? All these things, I stay cool, I stay calm, and I say, oh my God, I'm in fear, but wait a minute, is that going to be most powerful in the situation? It's better that I'm calm, cool, collected to do my very vet best rationally and logically to make sure that my horse has the best chances of survival. That's just an, an example, is I, I don't need to get hysterical about it and, you know, get crazy, which I've done in the past before that didn't work, is now, you know, stay calm, know that I can dissipate and disappear the fear that can drive me into hysteria and crisis and say, no, wait a minute, Karen, you've been through this before. You've had many horses. You've euthanized your horses because it was their time and in their best interest. So, you know, let's one step at a time. Let's see the situation, gather the data, get the facts and have a very optimistic, hopeful, helpful perspective of the situation 
which then has me feel the sense of confidence and empowerment. And then I can actually say, okay, I got this. And now I can call the vet, do what I got to do, attend to the horse, call and help if I need it, and do my very best to give that horse its best chances of survival, health, and wellness. And that's a quick example on the anatomy of the situation. So when we have to, granted, if you're a person who likes to go out and go to the coffee shop and do the work there and be around other people, I, you know, it's unfortunate that you're not able to do that. And so, but for you to think, oh God, I can't do anything because that's what helps me, that is not true. That's a lie. Is that being able to reframe, okay, well, wait a minute, in order to respect not getting anyone else sick or myself sick, um, I'm going to say yes and look at all the good in this situation. Reframe it to say, okay, I would rather be at the coffee shop working, I feel that I'm more productive, but that's not necessarily true. If I have a supercomputer, as Karen says, right here in my head, I can override this. I can make the best of it. I can reframe this. I can see all the good and abundance in this situation. As if I can work in lockdown, this is so true. If I can work in lockdown, I can work anywhere. That's where I stand, if, if, regardless of circumstances. If I can fulfill upon my dreams and desires and and goals and intentions um, in lockdown, I could do it anywhere. Look at this as an opportunity and have an optimistic, exciting uh, perspective on the situation. If I can do this, I can, I could go anywhere and achieve anything on my terms with the, the purest, truest sense of inner freedom first. It's an inside job. And then miraculously, regardless of what's happening outside, there's still the sense of freedom. And if we all collectively can think this way and understand all of this, we would actually be all happier and healthier and more productive that this pandemic, we could actually collectively stop the spreading of it, get the solution, the vaccination or whatever uh, is necessary from the medical standpoint But I know the stronger we are from an unconscious, subconscious, and conscious point of view in our minds, okay, the brain in action, the mind at work, the healthier we are, the more, uh, the stronger our immune system, the less likely we are to get diseased or be in distress or be in a state of dis-ease creating disease in the body, then we together can learn so much from this, gain so much wisdom and enlightenment and be happier and healthier, wiser collectively. And that we can not just get back to life as we know it, but actually improve it. We can actually make things even better, learn from this to possibly stop this from happening again or becoming more efficient if it ever does happen again and to actually have it as a powerful learning template to be able to weather any storm and all storms and whatever's happening in the world and together we can make this planet planet earth better collectively through human consciousness that's my whole thing human consciousness evolution in creating this collective sense of higher level evolved consciousness to make to to not make make the world a better place yes but what i want to say is to evolve humans to such a high level of being able to override this unconscious fear that we collectively can navigate through and become bet, become better, stronger, wiser, come out of these situations, having learned more and making everything better for humanity, not worse, better, more spectacular, more fantastical. And then that then creates a better world. So that we're coming from a place of support and helpful, hopefulness 
and we're coming from a place of paying it forward, giving it back. We're coming from a place of really being happy within ourselves, free within ourselves, not locked down or locked up or locked out, but free, 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 liberated, have this sense of joy and peace and fulfillment and meaning and purpose. And that creates dreams come true and then paying it forward and so on and so on and so on. So now we're into this magnificent ripple effect. That's what I believe. That's where I stand. And so working with your personal, whatever's being highlighted right now, crisis highlights weaknesses. And that is the perfect uh, situation to really go into self-examination, self-assessment, self-evaluation, understanding yourself and knowing that everything is within you to feel freedom within yourself first. And that ultimately, inevitably creates this freedom in our circumstances. And I'm only telling you from my own life. And I came from wealth. I came from abundance. I came from creating and achieving a lot of amazing things, but it still didn't work. I still didn't feel freedom on the inside. As a matter of fact, I felt more weighted down, more in prison because I had all these responsibilities, these mortgages to pay, horses to take care of. I felt more imprisoned, not less. And then I transformed it. I reversed it. And now freedom from within is giving me the ability to deal with all the circumstances and more wealth and more prosperity and more real estate and more, you know, take on more in life and continue to have one dream after another that is fulfilled upon. That's how this works. And this is the message that I can't stress enough. And the way to test it is look at your life. Do a reality check. Is your way working? When I did the reality check, I was floored. It, it blew me away is that I realized, oh my God, nothing worked. It wasn't working. You know, I was talking a big game and I was achieving a lot and I, I got worse, not better. And then the final nail in my coffin was when my sister finally died. Well, that was it. I really had to wake me up. You, you want a crisis? That's a greater crisis than anything as far as I'm concerned. And so, and that's just me personally right? That's way worse than any pandemic as far as I'm concerned. You know, to lose someone I love, a human that I love so much and adore so much. Um, And so when I was able to look back at my life and go, oh my God, reality check, no matter how much I, no matter how perfect I thought I could be and tried to be, no matter how much I accomplished and how much I achieved that I never felt an inner freedom and I, over time, felt more imprisoned and trapped and suffocating in my own mind. And so I can only tell you through my own personal experience to transform that, to reverse engineer it and come out where I am today is the way to go. The bottom line is to counteract the lockdown in your mind with massive freedom and self-acknowledgement and owning your brilliance and your genius and to understand yourself and to heal those childhood wounds, to understand why you're feeling locked down in the first place. Again, that's in part one, right? Understand that first and foremost, and it will all be in childhood. That's my story. I'm sticking to it because that's where it was for me to unlock all of that opened up a magnificent, infinite sense of freedom. And then that freedom created so much happiness for me and fulfillment that then I was able to rebuild and create so much on the outside and be happy whether I created it or not. That's the bottom line is that I didn't have to achieve anything anymore. I didn't have to prove anything anymore. I didn't have to pretend to be perfect because there's no such thing as perfection as a human being. There's no way to ever be perfect to understand that I have nothing to prove, I don't need to do this anymore, and that I'm not fearing any longer failing or being a loser, that created even more freedom and more freedom and more freedom. And so then there's a domino effect of more freedom. And so when you are feeling from within this sense of such freedom based on 
really powerful, empowering perceptions and, and keeping my life in proper perspective, I feel even more free and more free and more free. And it continues to build on itself like a snowball coming down the mountain with snow as it gets bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter. And I, I don't, there are not even any words to describe how magnificent this is, how great it feels and to know and have that confidence that, yeah, I'm going to break down, but I have the ability, the tools, the technology, the brain power to endure and persevere. Uh, and But this time have it be effortless, virtually effortless, where it's not even feeling heavy, but it's feeling as free as possible all along the way and understand that I'm coming out of this situation bigger, brighter, more brilliant within myself. And you have that within you as well. So, oh, I get so excited. I talk really fast and I'm excited and passionate about all of this. So the, the big key I've talked about it is that inner child stuff is to unlock all the, the genius and the greatness and the gifts from childhood is the biggest, biggest part of this. If you're interested in learning more, you can definitely email me, Karen Lovely at Gmail. Message me and say, Karen, tell me more about this. And I'm more than happy to complimentary, give you a complimentary consultation in the realm of what this looks like, which, like I said, is my favorite part, the best part. That is more in the one-on-one coaching part. But if you are interested no obligation, please email me and put inner child consultation in the subject line, Karen, K-A-R-E-N, love, L-O-V-E, Lee, L-E-E, at Gmail. And we uh, we will connect and we will discuss and see, you know, how I can help you in more enlightenment. And again, no obligation and we can go from there. But in the meantime, you have my podcast. There's so many great resources out there for mental health, mental mental health, mental wealth, I want to say. Uh, the key is to master the power of your mind. Master the power of your own mind and how your mind must be connected to your heart and your passion, your burning desires, your obsessions, and that's Ultimately, what's going to create the magic and the miracles and the dreams come true. One step at a time, the power of self-evolution, the power of unconditional self-love, self-worth, it all is within you. It's there for the taking. Go lock it up and take it, if you will, and set yourself free from the internal lockdown. And this ultimately will free you up in the physical external lockdown and I'm wishing you so much freedom at this time so much wisdom and enlightenment that you're beside yourself okay I'd love to hear from you email me with comments questions anything you'd like for me to discuss on a future podcast I'd love to hear from you thank you so much for listening and I'm wishing you ah magnificence, magic, health, wealth, prosperity. Oh my God, now is a time for prosperity and opportunity and success in business. That's another podcast yet to come. I've been putting that out little by little, but just look to see all the good and all of this for yourself and how it directly relates to you personally. You want to reframe everything and reframe your perspectives to see all the good that's coming out of it and come from a place of optimism and positivity and come from a place of gratitude and thankfulness and of great hope and leadership and come from all the perspectives and perceptions of the greatness and extraordinariness in in this quote-unquote crisis Because it's always there for the taking. It's inevitable. It's always a double-edged sword. So if you can see all the good in all of this, that's going to be your best, best solution and remedy. Thank you so much.